Hey there folks and welcome back to part two. In this part of this series we're going to cover cleaning the inside of the vehicle. So I'll probably hit the wheels as well and then we'll finish this off with some paint correction. So different car, different day. I keep saying I got too many cars so figured I'd get the inside of this one done. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the glass. So on this car it's got tinted windows so you mentioned earlier in uh, part one that we need to use an ammonia free or a tint safe uh, glass cleaner, if you will, and a microfiber rag. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, since we've done the outside of this car, I'm gonna clean the outside of the glass, um, just part of the car wash, it's already been done, but I'm gonna do it again with my ammonia free cleaner, and then I'm gonna do the inside of the glass with a clean microfiber towel. Let's get started. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and start by simply spraying some of my uh, glass cleaner on a microfiber and then kind of scrubbing the windshield. If there is stuff stuck on it like tree sap, uh, nothing really works better than a razor blade. I'll show you. We'll just take a brand new razor blade and we'll do this this way where you can see it. And you can see it just literally nukes that tree sap off. And then a little wipe and all is good. I'll clean the whole windshield this way, get all the tree sap and junk off of it. While we're doing this, we also want to wipe the uh, wiper blades. I suppose additionally, you could uh, spray this directly on the windshield. It just depends if you've done your paint or not. You might not want that overspray on the paint. Okay folks, so next up, I'm just going to take all the stuff off the dash. I'm going to clean the inside of the windshield. Uh, don't forget your two side mirrors, your side view uh, mirrors on your doors. I just cleaned those off camera, so no big deal. Uh, here's where you don't get away with uh, spraying anything directly on the windshield. Just I, You see it all the time. Trust me, don't do it. It takes a little bit longer to spray it on the rag. Uh, anytime we're doing windows on the inside of the car, since that's where the tint film is applied, I literally just spent several hundred dollars to have the windows in this car tinted. The last thing I want to do is scratch that tint film. So obviously, due to legal reasons, the windshield is not tinted. That's another debate that's not for today. But what I want to avoid doing is spraying my glass cleaner all over my plastics and my dash and, and things like that. And I'm also going to repeat that same process when I spray something, you know, like an Armor All, which is fine, or a Pro Shine, which I, I like a little bit better, doesn't really matter. Um, I don't want to spray anything directly on the dash because it's going to go all over the windshield, and, and that's no good. It's a safety hazard as well. Let's clean the inside of this windshield. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray a copious amount of this product onto this rag, and I'm going to get the old lean going on. Call it the lean. And I'm just gonna do the same as before. Perimeter, work my way up, do about half the windshield at a time, and go the other way. Okay, so we're softening up all the dirt, all the fog, all the accumulations on the windshield. We're softening those up. Then we're simply gonna turn the rag to a dry spot, and we're gonna buff to a nice shine you should be able to stick that rag all the way up in that crack between the windshield and the uh, dashboard. So sometimes they're really bad. Like I like to drink a coffee every morning on my way to work. So my windshield tends to, you know, steam up a little more probably than uh, most people with coffee and such in the car. So anyway, double check it. Once the outside's clean, the only place the dirt can be <laughs> is on the inside. 
We'll repeat the same for this side. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna roll this window down just a little bit, and I'm gonna wipe the top edge to get any of the garbage off, all that stuff again. We're using a clean microfiber and our uh, ammonia-free glass cleaner, because this is actually the side with the window tint applied to it. So what I'm gonna do at that point, I'm just gonna dry everything real good, like such. Then I'll roll the window up, and you see how my window is completely trashed. Um, I'm gonna actually leave that for now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put some more glass cleaner on my rag, and I'm just gonna wipe that inside. That is what happens when you roll the windows down, unfortunately, after you've washed a car. So maybe keep that in mind, clean the inside first. But I guess in the long run, probably don't really matter. You have to be your biggest fan. And when things are really tough and they're really rough and nothing's working, but there's something inside of you that says, I just have to follow that. Because you don't know who you're gonna meet, who you're gonna meet, who you're gonna meet. All right, while we're at it, uh, we're gonna crawl into the back seat and we're gonna clean the rear glass. So something a lot of people don't know about and any and every glass guy will tell you about is the correct way to clean the rear window. Now, bullet point number one, you have heated rear glass in like 99.9% .9 of all these vehicles. And bullet point number two is the coils or the strips within it are actually glued to the window. So if I take my rag and carelessly, you know, scrub up and down, I'm liable to rip one of those coils or strips out of the glass, which really the only right way to fix it is to replace the rear glass. No good. So what we do is we always wipe with the coils in the back glass. So um, an easy way to do that. And again, I'm not gonna spray directly onto the, the glass because uh, it's gonna trash this. It's quite a, a deep rear window. So I'll just clean a little bit of it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna soften up any schmoo on the glass. We're gonna be careful. This is obviously tinted, so <laughs> Technically, it doesn't matter which direction you wipe because the tint film is applied over the coils. So I am free to wipe up and down, but if you have a clear glass, you really gotta wipe sideways. Okay, so the dashboard is really no mystery either. Um, the only thing that I change, wow, this bottle is nasty. Not a sponsor. Uh, I love this product called ProShine. I believe it's made by Black Magic, and it is. And uh, it has the UV protectors and things like that for our hot Wyoming summers. And then it also leaves no shine. So it's the perfect stock finish. So again, if you spray it directly on the dash, bad idea. I actually spray this directly outside the car because I don't want the mist in the car. You gotta excuse the low headroom here. Big guy, little car. So I have applied it to this t-shirt and I simply massage it into the dashboard in this extremely high quality fake leather stuff that Toyota has felt the need to use. So we are on the original dashboard on this car. Google it if you know what I mean. Anyway, if you have filth in the vehicle, uh, it would probably be wise to get like a simple green or something like that, some warm water. I've used ammonia, uh, things like that, with a little bit of warm water, okay, a lot of warm water. And uh, it gets the sticky pop and stuff out, but you know, I don't live like a pig, so it's not a big deal in this car. <laughs> I suppose all you see is my big dome. Uh, if you want more shine, I have no problem with uh, Armor All, uh, 303 makes another uh, great product. You usually buy it at the uh, upholstery shop. They speak pretty highly of it, and they speak pretty highly of Armor All as well. So uh, the only precaution I'm gonna offer you is to be a little bit careful when you get around your glass and stuff like that so that you don't have a bunch of smearage 
going on. So I'm just wiping around the instrument panel too. We're gonna be equally careful so we don't turn into Smear City. Okay, folks, now that we are finished up, I'm just gonna take an older microfiber that I don't care about a lot, and I'm just gonna wipe this. So you notice it's still shiny, and uh, that drives some car enthusiasts absolutely nuts. But rest assured, it's okay, it'll be fine. Uh, this uh, black magic dries literally like you put nothing on it. So it's not the product you wanna use if you want some shine. Uh, Armor All is, is where I go for that. But if you want protection on the dashboard against the UV rays and things like that, and have it look stock, yet slightly sophisticated, uh, this is definitely the product choice that I have for you. So we're gonna just take our time, wipe everything down good, and uh, all that good stuff, and then uh, I think we gotta move on to this leather interior. Pretty easy to clean. I've had leather interior since, um, since I was in high school. So I've kind of dealt with the goods and the bads. The goods, it's easy to clean. The bads, uh, try wearing a pair of jeans with buttons uh, that it'll tear the seat, you know, things like that. So there's pros and cons. I still would personally take the leather interior. You do notice I have a towel and that's just, uh, it helps it really with the sliding in and out. And if you want to jazz things up, well, take the towel out. So I suppose I could always go buy a seat cover, but you know, they're a lot of money. and. I have leather interior with a seat cover, I guess, is a question you're probably asking. Let me finish this dashboard. Folks, our next step is one of these. And if I have to go over how to use it, this ain't the video for you. So I'm gonna vacuum the seats first. I am just gonna use a standard crevice cleaner. You could use a brush if you want. But I'm gonna push the, uh, pour the seams of the leather open and vacuum up. Because one of the things that really rots the stitches are when like sand and stuff, pocket lint type debris, gets in the stitches and then it just constantly grinds together, rots the threads out and the seats open up. So not cool, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna vacuum the cup holders and all of that other stuff. Then we're gonna condition this leather. Uh, the front seats typically get the most use obviously. So um, I'm only gonna do the fronts, but I'm gonna vacuum the back and all of that other stuff just to you know, make the car smell nice and have everything clean. So let's get started. So the next thing we're gonna do is I've got two damp rags. So um, I'm gonna just fold one in half and then I'm gonna set one aside for later. And I'm gonna use saddle soap to uh, clean the seat. And what this is, ew, is the same soap I use on my boots that just does a wondrous job of cleaning leather. So we're gonna take a little bit, we're gonna simply scrub it into the seat. You will want to moisturize your leather after doing this. Just it, it makes it look a little bit nicer, but I happen to have an awesome product for that. I do use a light colored towel in the interest of not uh, transferring any gupola. You can kind of maybe see a little bit of color change uh, for the black, really, but it's fine. It's doing its job. It's cleaning. It's cleaning the seat. Uh, anyway, I don't like using a dark colored rag in case we get any sort of, you know, dye transfer going on, so that would be bad. This gets all the pop stains and even some of the dye stains from uh, like blue jeans and stuff out of the leather. It really does a nice job. I use it on the console, it gets rid of that sticky crap. Uh, sometimes you do have to steam the seat with some soap if it's really bad. And I've even had seats that are so bad I've had to use Gojo on them. And that's 
that's uh, that's really bad. Okay, like seriously, you're. Uh, <laughs> what do you do? Live in your car? Next, what we'll do is we'll just wipe off that soap. And then I'm gonna rinse the rag and I'll wipe that soap off one more time because it's kind of like shampoo. You really don't want to leave that on the seat. So it does a nice job for mild cleaning. It's not gonna do anything crazy. Grease stains, it's not gonna take those out, but uh, it really makes the leather look you know, nice and luxurious the way it's supposed to. Let's do the driver's seat. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna use this tannery product. Not a sponsor of the show. I really like it, the nozzle on it is pretty bad. So I usually spray the amount that I want, you know, not in a, in a seam, because it's nice. It's just gonna end up all over your bum. But uh, enough to get it into the rag, and then I simply massage that into the leather. So be pretty generous with it, because we'll wipe it off when we're finished, and then it will leave. Oh, there's the nozzle. See what I mean? You have to remove it, and then reinstall it in a slightly different orientation usually. Well, maybe that's not gonna work. Might have to get some compressed air. I don't know, ever since I've owned that can, it has done that. It's expensive stuff too. I'm not exactly sure where I bought that from. But uh, anyway, we're getting it done. All right, so we are basically finished with the car. Uh, glass is done, both sides, carpet's done, all of that stuff. Leather is detailed, dash is clean. <sighs> Smells like a new car. Um, the last thing that I wanna talk about, and the reason I put it last, because it's probably gonna trash the windows, is it's kind of a step best left to the pros, but I do wanna to touch on it a little bit. Uh, you saw it in that short little clip here. Uh, where my paint just doesn't look real shiny. It's got years of water spots. It's never been waxed. It's what I call a neglected finish. And this car was like that when I bought it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use uh, 3M's Perfectit system. Again, this is best left into the hands of professionals. And the uh, white bonnet, I'm gonna give you a skinny on a, just buffing. We're not gonna do any sanding. It's not that bad. I think if we soak on it for a little bit with this buffer, that we're gonna see some amazing results. So we'll go up through compound one, compound two. If you want more information on how that looks, uh, check out my channel on buffing either small parts or any of the full panel. Um, let's see, the uh, Your First Auto Body Project, I think is the name of the video. It's got the buffing uh, hot linked in the video description. So I'll put a link to that one down below if you want more information on how to use this. The good thing is it's fast. It's way faster than anything else out there because it's a rotary. So your flex and stuff like that, it's, it's gonna run circles around it. The downside about it is you can see primer really quick in the um, less than competent hands. So definitely don't recommend using a rotary polisher on a uh, customer's car if you're practicing, if you're not real comfortable. This, um, I'm just gonna do the trunk lid. I really need to spend a day. It takes me about eight hours. I need to take a day and really, you know, genuinely buff every nook and cranny of this car. So kind of saving that for the summer, but to finish this video, you know, I'm okay with the trunk lid being shinier than the rest of the car. Let's get started. So I'm just gonna put a uh, generous amount of white on the white. I'm gonna pick it up. Yeah, not really a tutorial how to buff your car, but a tutorial that when you get your car detailed and you pay good money, which people pay me good money to buff their cars, just how good it can look, no repaint required.
Dirty. Clean. Dirty. Just gonna hit it with some Meguiar's QD. Uh, not a sponsor. We'll get it all over the glass too. Uh, no big deal. Kind of like almost an alcohol-based stuff. Does a really nice job. I'm gonna wipe my paint first while the rag is clean. You now see why I brought so many microfibers. Um, it's amazing what buffing will do to an old paint job. I do want to caution you though that uh, deep scratches, you're not buffing them out. So OEM clear coat is pretty fun to buff on, I think, um, if you didn't sand it. If you sand OEM clear coat, uh, it's kind of a bear to, uh, to get it looking good again. So just keep that in mind. It is very, 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 very um, hard, if you will. So we're gonna have a few streaks on this window, which is why I would recommend doing this step first, but I would not recommend doing this step unless you're a professional detailer or you're very confident with the uh, rotary polisher because there is quite a lot of liability with uh, bad things you can do to the paint. You really very easily with a rotary polisher uh, can just grind right through the paint. And, the only way you know, especially on this white, is uh, you hit the black primer underneath it. So no good there. So if you're a novice, I would stick to either, you know, buffing by hand or using that bonnet type system you can get from AutoZone or whatever, the big, you know, terry cloth thing. They're a lot safer. Uh, Flex is another good option, but for the price of a Flex, I can buy a real rotary polisher and get, you know, results that are about impossible to get otherwise. Well, there you got it, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed our two-part series here on how to wash and, you know, properly care for your car. Unfortunately, there are so many people that just completely ignore that step. You know, they think the automatic car wash is, you know, the best thing for your paint. And yeah, granted, it's easy. Um, big downside of it, any detail products you put on it, they are gone the second you take it through the auto wash. So I avoid them. I don't like them. Um, I don't know if they do or don't scratch your car, but I know when I wash my car, it's done the way that I want it to be done. And it doesn't cost me nearly as much in the wallet department as it does taking it to the car wash. So with that being said, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.